today we will talk about quasi particles these are very important <coughs> in um, understanding the how the quantum computing um, the solid state quantum computing for example how they behave internally okay so this is our attempt to uh, present just the basic concepts okay of the quantum theory of solid states you will start questioning like what are the components of say for example anything that we get to hear anything that we perceive or uh, with our senses like we can ask the question like what are the components and we can expect a non trivial substantiative answer okay. the object uh, consists of molecules of atoms right ions nucleons and so on then we in the present day paradigm there are further subdivisions so the nucleons into protons and neutrons and quarks and so on so at every stage we can ask the question what are the components of so and so and we can then specify its meaning say for example the molecule of common salt right? it consists of sodium and chlorine ions a diamond crystal consists of carbon atoms a protein macromolecule of amino acids so like in order to decompose common salt okay, what we do we dissolve it in water so now owing to its high polarizability the coulomb attractive forces between the ions decreases right? because it's a big molecule and it breaks into the constituent parts so nacl breaks into na plus and cl minus and much greater forces are required to tear the electrons away from the sodium and chlorine ions roughly several electron volts per electron and energy a million times greater so that is of the order of many giga electron volt okay? that would be needed to separate a nuclear from a nuclear means uh, either a proton or a neutron from a nucleus so therefore a structural unit isn't something quite unambiguous or quite different okay? then what does it depends on it depends on the depth of penetration into the structure this is like the heart of the matter it's the elementary essence or the fundamental basis so these famous what we say the building blocks on which everything is built the paradigm of this building blocks changes okay. so this meaning of such an such concepts as elementary particle elementary particles or structure unit and so forth this is undoubtedly conditional from what situation we are determining which one as the structural unit so this characterizes either the level to which physics has progressed so far or the set of means set of means means uh, is conditional set of means it essentially means the forces applied to single out a structure so these concepts 
also reflect certain objective content, permitting clear quantitative evaluation. So a, a molecule can be regarded as an elementary particle where in cases when this molecule acts as a whole so it undergoes no impact capable of decomposing that molecule so the bonding energy of atoms in the molecule we know that and we can strictly uh, delineate the range of phenomena together with the values of the parameters that describe them. So in such case molecule is the elementary particle. So let me give you an example. So for example at any temperature a molecular gas contains fragments. What it contains? It fragments of molecules. When you say fragments, it essentially means atoms or ions. So now this molecular class is at a temperature T. The higher this temperature goes, okay, and the higher the concentration of the molecular gas, the concentration of these fragments is then the measure of the accuracy of the concept of this elementary particle right? with respect to a particular molecule in the gas. So we have that choice of components okay? and it is not unambiguous at all. But still we need certain specific physical conditions. So even in identical conditions, one and the same object has to be considered consisting of one sort of elementary particles in the experiments of one type and a different sort of particles in the different type of experiment. Okay, so we take the same example of this molecular gas. Now this T, this temperature of the molecular gas is not too high. So the specific heat of the molecular gas shows that the sufficiently high accuracy is obtained if the gas is assumed to consist of molecules. There will be a very small admixtures of ions, of course, and it can be neglected. So in such case, with small t, the molecular gas, the elementary particle can be a molecule. With sufficient accuracy, you can say that. Now, when the electrical conductivity of a molecular gas is considered, okay, so when temperature is less, so elementary particle is molecule. Now, the condition is that the electrical conductivity is present in the molecular gas in the vicinity of the gas. Okay. Then what happens? Then the elementary particles will become ions. So in su such experiments, neutral molecules will be there, but they will be in very small quantities. Okay. So in the case of specific investigation, specific investigation means that it's the low temperature is low. Gas molecules can be considered the elementary particles because firstly the gas energy, energy e, is to a high degree of accuracy the sum of energies of individual molecules. Okay. Secondly, Internal motions in a molecule can be neglected when the energy of an individual molecule is considered. Now the current must be considered consisting of ions. There will be ions, so there will be currents. And 
I'll, because I was only transport the charge of the molecular gas to which electric field is applied. So as the total current passing through the gas is the sum, so total current passing through the gas will be sum of the elementary currents of individual ions. What is an elementary current of an individual ion? It is equal to charge times the velocity. So this concept of elementary particle, it essentially includes the additivity of something consisting of the introduced elementary particles or portions. This particular requirement of additivity of what a body consists of, this is demonstrated especially clearly for the concept of mass. So we take up the concept of mass defect which is a corollary of Einstein's relationship E equals to mc square. So it states that the diminishing energy of a body makes it lighter. The stability of a crystalline phase, it signifies that the energy of the crystal is lower than the sum of energies, sum of all the energies of the separated molecules or the energies of the molecules. Here we see this additivity again. So energy of the crystal is lower than the sum of energies of the molecule and this is at the, is the stability phase. Stability of a crystalline phase. Why is that? Because the more stable the crystalline phase is, less is the velocity. So what happens is that this the sum the energy when the velocity is higher, the energy is higher. As the energy velocity reduces, the energy reduces. So the molecules, so that's the molecules. Uh, if this is um, separated. So it's separated molecules means that these molecules are removed to indefinitely large distance from one another. As an example, let us consider the crystal of a solid hydrogen. Its mass is equal to the sum of the masses of the molecules to the accuracy of the mass defect. The mass defect in this case is very small. Mass defect is of the order of uh, say about 10 to the power minus 37 gram per mole molecule that is the mass defect so to this accuracy of the mass defect its sum is equal to the masses of the molecules so when a hydrogen molecule is decomposed decomposed into two atoms which is H2 H plus H these are two neutral atoms the mass defect is already about 5 into 10 to the power minus 34 gram and this decomposition of hydrogen atom into a proton and an electron. So this is represented as this proton and electron. This results in the mass defect of about 3 into 10 to the power minus 33 gram. So this is much bigger than this and this is much bigger than this. So this sequence of figures, so 10 to the power minus 37, this one and this one, 
this points to the accuracy of the statement that solid hydrogen consists of what it is consists of. So this is becomes the accuracy. When this the mass defect is 10 to the power minus, minus 37, we can say that the solid hydrogen consists of molecules. When the mass defect is this, we can say the solid hydrogen consists of atoms. And when the mass defect is this, we can say the solid hydrogen is consisting of protons and electrons. The mass defect is an important figure to consider when we are stating that something is consists of something. So we must emphasize that the statement becomes rigorously defined. So the reason we are undergoing this elementary definition is very important as we will go along in like the uh, we will because quantum computers today are consisting of photons they are consisting of uh, like transform qubits like solid states and several other type devices like so we will consider all those things like photons, electrons, we will consider, we will have to consider phonons. With these, we will come to the cons uh, <coughs> concepts of the quasi-particles. So if we analyze the same statement from the standpoint of energy, we will see that the statement uh, would be devoid of a meaning. So the energy of a crystal line cannot be expressed as the sum of the energies of the separate non-interacting molecules because the energy of the intermolecular interaction is far from being small in comparison with the kinetic energy of the molecules.